this is Alejandro Cremades, and today we're going to be talking about the pros and the cons of raising venture capital. So with that being said, today uh, we're going to really discuss like why should you accept venture capital money or why should you not accept venture capital money? There's always going to be an upside and a downside. So with that being said, let's get into it. So in terms of the pros, the most important one, obviously, is going to be that you are going to be able to go much faster. I mean, rather than bootstrapping and then just risking it and maybe you're going to make it, maybe not. With venture capital, you can just like get that money, give yourself 18 to 24 months of runway, and you can just like go really fast and really do all these different things that you would not do normally if you're bootstrapping, meaning that you're using money that you're generating from sales in order to continue pushing the business. So definitely going faster is one of the pros. The next pro is really being able to buy up the market. So for example, if you are operating a platform or a marketplace where you have the supply and the demand, you're able to go out and really spend a lot in marketing. You're able to really get mind share and market share from the other competitors that perhaps don't have as much fuel in order to really do advertising and get the word out there. I mean, in marketplaces where there is a winner's take all, like for example, an Uber or maybe like another one like Airbnb, having that mind share and that real big market share is going to give you an edge towards any of your competitors. So this is one of the other pros of having venture capital behind you. The next is that you don't have to die before you make it. So this is one of the critical pieces to really understand when we're talking about the pros of getting venture capital money. So rather than just going like month to month, paycheck to paycheck or wh whatever you want to call it, really when you have venture capital, you can go super fast. You're not going to be relying on certain customers to come through, on the account receivables to, to, to make sense. You're just going to go out there with whatever money you have and you're just going to go and execute on the roadmap that you have presented to your investors. So that's basically another one of the, of the pros. Next advantage here is that you are going to be able to attract and potentially retain great talent. When you're able to get venture capital money from top tier firms, essentially you're sending a signal to the market that you're in a position of strength, that things are working out, and that's why sophisticated investors are backing your business. Now, one of the things about the top tier venture capital firms is that they have platforms. They have platforms where they literally plug those platforms into your business and help you to speed things up in a, in a way that you didn't know it was there. But basically, those platforms have support on the HR side. So if you need to recruit, uh, let's say you need a CMO or you need a CFO, essentially those firms can go into their networks and really introduce you to the right candidates. So I think that not only having the money at your disposal to be able to go and hire people is a great thing, but then also the networks that you're going to be able to get from those VCs are going to be also fantastic. The next is that you're really going to be able to have great, great networks. So essentially, when you're raising money from venture capitals and perhaps you're sending them the pitch deck, you're getting them aligned. And by the way, you have a great pitch deck template below, which I recommend that you download. Essentially, you got to turn it around with, with when you're raising money. And don't look at the money itself, but look at who is giving you the money. What kind of networks do they have behind them? And how can you leverage those networks in order to unlock certain milestones to get you faster to where you want to be in the next 18 to 24 months of, of execution? So with that being said, I find that, again, having certain, certain investors really that have those networks can help you in really unlocking, like I was saying, the milestones, in getting the top tier talent, like we discussed before, in giving you access to additional distribution, to business development deals, and then also great partnerships. And then, of course, to subsequent rounds of financing, where they can introduce you to other investors, and then perhaps to potential acquirers that, you know, they know that they can just lift up the phone, tell them how exciting your business is, and then essentially you get an offer on the, on the table to acquire your business. Now, in terms of the disadvantage, right, or, or the cons when it comes to raising money, the first one is obviously distraction. 
So a distraction is going to be a really key thing, you know, when you're raising money. Uh, it's funny because investors still are expecting you to continue to execute, to continue to have great traction. But obviously, you know, like when you are putting your attention away and really putting it on fundraising, which is a really uh, an emotional roller coaster, it's like doing sales, but on a whole lab, another level, essentially, you're going to get your eyes off the ball. And you're going to put them on trying to get that money to really get to the next level. But, you know, like I think that essentially I think if you do a good job at, for example, like creating a CRM and making sure that you have like the, the strategy on how you're going to be following up with people, how you're going to get them excited, maybe, you know, like there's a way for you to balance that distraction that getting out there and really pitching your business is really going to, to, to really bring to the table, no? The next con, or the next disadvantage, is really that you are committing to an exit. So the minute that you are taking venture capital money in, you are making them a promise that eventually you're going to give them returns, whether it's in the form of an acquisition, doing an IPO, or whatever that is. But you're essentially telling them that you're going to go really fast, you're going to grow very fast, and then essentially one day you're going to give them returns on the investment that they're giving you. And typically, when a venture capital firm invests in your business, what they're really looking to obtain in return is at least 10x on the investment that they're putting on you. Because the rule of thumb is that one third of the investments of that venture capital firm is going to go out of business. Another third is going to potentially break even and maybe make some money. And then the last third is going to really provide the returns to cover also for the losses and provide our returns to their own investors, which are the limited partners. The next disadvantage at the end of the day is losing control. So rather than having 100% of your business, now you're going to be giving away equity. You're, go you're going to be giving away seats on your board. So they're going to be making votes and they're going to have a say on the execution and on the strategy of your business. And essentially the problem with that is that the more that you raise, the less control that you have, the less equity that you hold, and essentially they can eventually kick you out of the business if you're not performing well. So be very careful with that, and then also don't over dilute yourself, meaning don't give too much equity on financing round, on each financing round, because the rule of thumb is that you do not dilute yourself by more than 20% per round of financing. The next disadvantage, obviously, is really attracting the wrong people. I mean, let's face it, you know, there is the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's not about the firm that you're working with, it's about the partner that you're working with, and at the end of the day, if you're attracting the wrong candidate to sit on your board or perhaps to make an investment in your business, not only they can get you out of that company, they can also destroy uh, financial rounds, they can, they can also destroy potential acquisitions. I mean, I've seen the real ugly part of it, and what I can tell you is one question that you should always ask the venture capital firm that is going to be investing or looking at making an investment in your business is ask them a very simple question. Would you be open to making an introduction to a portfolio company founder that has failed? And essentially, what you're going to do then is you're going to speak with that other entrepreneur that failed, that received an investment from that investor that you're speaking with, and ask them, how did that investor behave during the tough times? Because at the end of the day, let's face it, building and scaling a business is not a straight line. You're going to have the ups and the downs. And whenever you are on the downs, you want to make sure that that investor that you're onboarding is going to step it up and really help you to continue executing along the way. The next disadvantage or the next cons, really, is that you are going to have a smaller piece of the pie. So essentially, when you're taking money in, you are telling that investor that rather than maybe like being at a, I don't know, like 50 million valuation in which they're making the investment today, you're promising them that potentially you're going to get to a 500 million acquisition. So obviously, you are increasing your chances of risk or, or, or really, I mean, you're, you're, you're making it much riskier for you. 
Uh, and then also you are giving those expectations to the VC. And at the end of the day, you never know the outcome. In many, many cases, in most cases, actually, venture back companies, founders, they don't end up making any returns. So for that reason, you got to be super careful uh, and make sure that you got the numbers right and that you understand what you're getting into and what is going to be your own potential exit. Not just the exit of the company itself, but you need to do your own numbers so that you know if you're taking that money in, if it's going to justify for you and your outcome whenever you know there is an acquisition on the business itself. So hopefully you like this video, and if that was the case, just make sure that you throw in a like below, also leave a comment, and then don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep up to date with all the videos that we're launching every week. So also don't forget as well to check out the fundraising training, which is the program where we help founders from A to C with everything related to fundraising. We have there a live Q&A every month. We have templates, agreements, a community of founders all over the world helping each other at the fundraising stage, and you name it. So thank you so much for watching.